Uh, so I want to welcome everybody to this webinar on M Supply DHS2 integration and really looking at opportunities both from a functional side uh, and a technical side um, for putting these systems together. Um, I want to first uh, introduce myself and then just introduce the other presenters. And we're very happy to have the M Supply team join us for this webinar. But first, my name is Brian Horst, and I'm the LMIS technical lead at the HISP Center at the University of Oslo. Uh, I've been working for the last couple of years uh, developing this use case for um, LMIS with DHS2. And it's very much based on integration, on uh, bringing data together um, between DHS2 and other ELMIS systems. And then I'm very happy then to welcome the M Supply team uh, to present themselves, who will be also uh, having a, a good uh, presentation on the system and taking part in a question and answer afterwards. So uh, welcome, Craig, Richard. Uh, feel free to, to give a short introduction before I start uh, the presentation, but over to you. Do you want to start, Craig? Sure. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Craig uh, Drown. I'm the founder of uh, Msplay and uh, been working uh, with us for over 20 years now. Originally a pharmacist. Uh, these days, I just uh, do a lot of emails and meetings, but I love it. Nice to meet you all. Hi, everyone. I'm Richard Moiseau. I'm a consultant for the Msplay Foundation. I've been working for the foundation now for three years originally working in the supply chain management and uh, mostly managing uh, Francophone countries. All right, will there be somebody else or will be the, the two of you presenting? I think I can see this also Jonah and Adam. If they want to you present, want to present yourself. yourself. <laughs> Hi, thanks Richard. Hi, I'm Adam Jui. Um, the product manager for immunization and cold chain um, for our organization. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let uh, Craig and Rashad do the presenting today, but nice to meet you all. Hi, I'm Jonah Kismindo. I'm software developer and flight development manager. I usually more work on THIS2 integration, though. Um, just Richard and Craig will present today. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much to the M Supply team. And of course, they'll have uh, a big part in the presentation uh, a bit later. And we'll also have some uh, time for question and answer with them. Uh, so what I'll start with actually is just a short presentation to set the stage and uh, present a bit the approach uh, that we're taking from a slightly different uh, perspective, really looking at opportunities. So both uh, implementation and technical opportunities. Um, I've given a presentation now very many times on the DHS2 LMIS approach. So I'm not going to deviate for that. The approach is the same, but this might be just a slightly different way of presenting it. Um, also to say that uh, I work very closely with uh, George McGuire who is the LMIS technical advisor, who has extensive uh, experience, research experience as well within health supply chains, who's really guided um, a lot of the technical decisions and, and uh, that we've taken in how to use and optimize DHS2 for LMIS uh, uh, features, and also to set uh, a limit to where the software maybe reaches a point where it can't deliver anything uh, any more benefit and really that's where we recommend using uh, a dedicated tool, a, a professional tool such as M-Supply. And also Per Kronslav, who you see there, who's been working uh, uh, more and more with us supporting some uh, uh, implementations um, and I'll touch a bit on those a bit later. So for the purpose of this meeting, it's to give an impression of what an ELMIS system is, uh, having an understanding of the different functionalities and what's possible within DHIS2 and what is not recommended understanding the M supply tool and what what it provides. I only have a single slide on that because of course they will they will elaborate in much more detail in, in their uh, section of the of the webinar. And then how some common projects can be developed together, understanding how the HISP network and the HISP groups can uh, can work on that and a potential way forward and hopefully we can have some discussions and questions from uh, from the participants. 
to give a very quick uh, overview of current status in just a few countries. And these are, are really just uh, countries which we've worked with uh, in the recent past that we can give um, as a reference for discussions on what is currently being, being implemented. So in Mali, for example, you have a SAGE ERP implemented at a central medical store. And for some time, there was no uh, ELMIS tool working um, at a district level uh, and providing support for, for distribution to facilities. Uh, so this was very much paper-based in Excel, um, a lot of communication by email to actually work on that uh, supply network uh, portion of the supply chain uh, to the facility. At the same time, DHS2 had been implemented for some time at facilities with computers and was collecting stock data as part of the regular uh, HMIS and, and health reporting. Uh, stock data was being collected for essential medicines and for quite a few other programs uh, for quite a few years. It, uh, from 2018 or so, this had already been put in place or, or even a bit earlier. And the data was available through a central dashboard uh, called OSP Santé, but that operationalization of the facility level data was not in place. Um, but recently we worked on an integration where that data was then connected to the Medexa CLMIS uh, through a more recent project. And that was a way of bringing in existing data into uh, operational logistics management to be able to inform decisions and form resupply. Um, in DRC, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, a complex uh, um, uh, setting with many different um, siloed, let's say, implementations of different ELMISs and really um, no central and holistic system for managing. And DHS2 also uh, being used as a national HMIS, so opportunities to develop a similar type of approach as uh, what was implemented in Mali. Uh, in Rwanda, uh, one network is used as a national ELMIS, a very uh, robust tool, but also very costly. Uh, DHS2 implemented at a facility level, but um, exploring on how that can be leveraged for even uh, more, uh, uh, better integration with this uh, central tool, and also seeing uh, what the sustainability is of, of a very expensive, uh, uh, this one network tool. And then in Sudan, where we have a project now just finalizing with a global fund, where there was a robust uh, ERP at the central medical store and at the state level, uh, Ramco ERP. And they had attempted multiple um, uh, times to, to digitize district and facility levels, but had never achieved that uh, uh, in large part due to infrastructure and just general capacity to put in place a digital system. So what we've done is used the DHS2, which was the, the of course, used as the HMIS and integrated uh, stock data sets for aggregate reporting at facility level or localities as uh, they refer to them in, in Sudan to again, develop towards this digitization of the last mile and connecting it with a central tool. Uh, these were just uh, a few countries and context just to give a reference to what is out there. I think they're generally representative of different countries with uh, which we work with, where there really isn't a holistic system managing supplies from central store down to facilities and not across all programs. And this kind of fragmented uh, landscape is, is actually a common one. It's something that we'll try to, to identify ways that we can solve and, and improve uh, both the supply management and, and health service delivery by digitizing facilities and integrating systems. Now quickly on the differences between the ELMIS and HMIS. And I think this is really targeted now for the DHS2 implementers that for HMIS, uh, it can be quite complex in terms of analytics and the uh, data being used by the system and really having um, uh, high data quality and um, uh, right denominators. And these are the common challenges that you have within an HMIS. These are the things that we work on a daily basis to improve. When it comes to an ELMIS, um, the challenges, uh, I mean, it could be the same with data quality and so on, but the general uh, purpose of it is to manage products and then the distribution of products across a network. It's not simply reporting to a central database and uh, 
pulling insights uh, through the calculations, but it's really uh, tracking and managing flow of goods and identifying um, uh, needs in order to, to supplement those, to ensure that you, you don't have a stock out situation of overstock and that you have the medicines at the right place at the right time to treat the patients who need them. So there's a general um, a difference in how these systems are, are built up. And this is really leads to the reason why we have a very uh, clear and defined use case for the DHIS2 system when it comes to LMIS. Now, the challenges, why um, do we not have uh, ELMIS or ERP systems uh, fully implemented at all levels of the health structure across all programs in any of the countries? And for example, the countries that I mentioned previously, there's um, first a complexity of, of, of issues. Um, these are often um, systems that are installed and run well during the project period, but there's a, a question of sustainability, how many of them are able to survive beyond the project period once the uh, external consultants are no longer present and this is being handed over to the country. That's one of the challenges. When it comes to an ERP, which can be quite a, a robust tool going much beyond just supply management, there's a cost aspect, the cost of maintaining, of licensing, of training and retraining, of adapting to evolving needs. And the cost really can become prohibitive, especially within public health in lower middle income countries. Um, to refer to a, another tool with OpenLMIS, which had um, uh, has quite a few uh, implementations, but uh, perhaps doesn't have the same uh, sustainability and, and uh, um, uh, base in order to maintain these individual implementations. And I think that's another um, challenge where you need to have an evolving uh, core to be able to adapt to new requirements and evolving requirements. And the question, as I mentioned, uh, the issue, as I mentioned previously, of training and retraining staff is there's a high amount of staff turnover, turnover particularly at the, at the lowest level of the supply chain or of the, of the health structures. And then having, again, the, uh, the ability to, to pay for all of these uh, the cost of maintaining and developing these systems. Now, what can DHS2 do? And equally as important, what can DHS2 not do? Um, I think as a starting point, it has proven to be uh, a stable uh, system that's been implemented broadly and has lasted over time. And I think those are very uh, uh, good aspects uh, and good starting points. There's also, of course, the HISP network the existing training, uh, guidance, materials, the academies that provide a very good basis for being able to implement and maintain the system independent of uh, University of Oslo and HISP Center and independently of any external consultants. So countries have really succeeded in being able to use and implement it with all of the resources that are available. Of course, being open source, there's no uh, uh, licensing costs and really the cost of maintenance are those direct cost of having the infrastructure and maintaining um, and, and training and retraining staff. And I think those are key aspects. When it comes to the technical or let's say functional requirements, um, as you see there, if we start first from the right side at the health center level, uh, you can both report on um, stock transactions uh, uh, on a monthly basis on the amount of stocks received, the amount issued and so forth. There are also different features for doing calculations using indicators and predictors in order to facilitate some of that data entry and reduce the amount of manual data entry. And you can also have uh, with the new uh, version 40 DHS2 manage stock transactions. So issuing stocks from facility level. What we do not recommend and what you should not do is using it for a central medical store, a regional warehouse, or even a district store. Uh, for that, we really recommend using a dedicated tool which is where M-Supply comes in. And we would strongly recommend having this type of dedicated software to uh, work on these different requirements. Um, I won't go too uh, far here because uh, the M-Supply team will of course go into detail on the software, but they've also been around for uh, uh, some time. Um, um, so they have proven the test of time to be able to implement and maintain uh, um, the different implementations in different contexts. There's a sta uh, stable core and a very uh, expert and dedicated team. 
And I think those are also uh, very strong aspects to, to collaborating more closely with them supply. Um, and they're also making a move towards open source and, and migrating their code. And we'll ask them some questions about that and what their plans are for the future. Um, they have solutions for all of the different levels of the supply chain and, of course, can be implemented at the health center and have great tools for that, including mobile tools. Um, and I think the aspects that we can explore is how can the two systems be brought together and work at that uh, that cutoff point where we say, okay, we implement M supply to a certain level of the supply chain, but from this point down, uh, it may be more useful to use DHIS2. And again, keeping in mind uh, the capacity and resources that a health worker has at a health center and the advantage of having a, a single integrated tool for capturing both health data and stock data, and then the need for having a dedicated ELMIS tool for higher volume sites for potentially uh, hospitals or, or, or sites with uh, much more uh, demands on the functional uh, LMIS that maybe DHS2 cannot answer to. A very quick overview, uh, of course, for a central medical store, a high quantity of items, uh, high volume, uh, many transactions uh, distributing for the entire country, definitely something you need a dedicated tool for. The same goes for a regional and district store. Um, at a hospital level, depending on the number of items, the volume of uh, transactions, and also the amount of resources available, um, a decision can be made on exactly uh, which system to use, but it's clear that that's a higher volume site. And then down to a health center, um, maybe uh, 100 to 200 items with management um, of location and expiry manually. And oftentimes not having a dedicated person, whereas in, in the first three levels there, you'll see uh, some more dedicated staff to managing stocks for the health center. It may be a health worker having to both manage their uh, regular activities and having the stock management as an additional requirement. So then the combined opportunity becomes identifying where having DHS2 at this last mile, integrating the data into M supply to support uh, the demand planning and forecasting and ensuring that stocks are at the correct level, uh, avoiding stockouts and overstock. I think that's really the key aspect here that we're looking to uh, maximize is bringing the two systems together. Uh, in addition to that, there's the opportunity also for analytics to be able to look at um, health service data and also stock data and comparing how these match against each other, depending on the amount of stocks that have been uh, issued and the amount of patients treated, um, different uh, discrepancies can be uh, can, can be looked into and, and investigated to improve both uh, health service and supply chain management. IT development never stops, of course, and also the needs of the implementation don't stop, they evolve over time. So this can be also something that can be implemented uh, in a, a stepwise approach and looking at a maturity development approach where it started potentially in parallel at different levels at the central medical store with a dedicated tool and DHS2 at a health center level and over time building towards an integration. Uh, we can also imagine it being implemented for a single program and being expanded across programs over time. Uh, but I think the intention and the standards which we refer to, uh, uh, the target software standards for um, uh, supply chain management from um, uh, revised earlier this year, really identifies having end-to-end -end visibility, transactional and report-based uh, data, and really looking to capture all of this within um, uh, the digital landscape. And together, these systems can work towards that, but it's not something that will necessarily happen overnight, but you can have a stepwise approach to reaching that objective. Now, these are just my last two slides. Before I uh, uh, take a pause, I can take some quick questions before handing over to the M Supply team. Um, but from a very um, HISP perspective, so both HISP Center and looking at the HISP network, um, this provides an opportunity to work with uh, uh, ministries, which you're already supporting, you're already uh, uh, working on uh, HMIS and other health-related solutions, uh, bringing uh, digitizing data, uh, bringing it to decision makers, but here also offering, um, helping support within supply management as well, offering multiple tools 
using the existing knowledge of DHI2, DHIS2, but also supporting uh, within an additional field. And there's definitely support and uh, backing from both uh, UIO, HISP Center, and M Supply to develop this further and explore on a case-by-case -case basis to look into what may be uh, appropriate for country A, B, or C, what kind of model can we uh, uh, develop together and support, what kind of uh, development path can we see for, for a specific uh, case. And this can really uh, reinforce the level and number of tools that are being offered to support a ministry. And I think this is something that we can also explore further uh, within this webinar. Um, but then, of course, to be able to take advantage of these opportunities, um, some time and effort and resources needs to be allocated to really understand what does this uh, uh, solution offer? What can it offer uh, for the countries? But what do we need to invest in terms of people uh, and to understand what the requirements may be? The opportunities would be, of course, uh, uh, implementations and uh, the ability to work on these uh, projects together but there is some time and effort that needs to be invested in order to explore these opportunities. All right, I wonder if there's any questions and also questions from the M Supply team uh, to what's been presented here as a starting point. Um, we can quickly take those now. Uh, so I just open the floor. Oh, apologies. I hope you were able to see my screen or I think somebody would have stopped me. Yes, Amza, go ahead. Morning, Breno, and thanks for the, for the good presentation. It is uh, very clear uh, what we need to do and uh, how we can get profit of this opportunity. However, I would like to get some precision on on two, the 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 cost the the cost of um, maybe involving people the the country people on uh, trainings, the cost of uh, uh, working with them like doing this mapping, and uh, also the. You know, if you are going on step two to have like a daily report, we need also to 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 put in mind the cost of internet for 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 the tracker to be uh, to be updated. So that is one. If we can have an estimation of cost, I guess that is what we can use when we are approaching countries to tell them how this solution is the best for 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 them. That is one. Another another. Another is uh, if I can, we can get also the same uh, presentation for for French countries so that we can help them also we can target some decision maker and try to convince them to to go for this kind of solution. Thank you. Great, thank you, Anza. Do you mind just giving a quick uh, intro, uh, presenting who you are, just so everybody is aware? Oh, sorry. Uh, my, my name is Amza. I'm working with HISP Rwanda as a DHS2 implementer and system admin. And uh, we are supporting currently, uh, country, most of the country we are supporting a French speaking country like Chad, Central Africa, uh, Madagascar, Comoros, Congo Brazza. Uh, so we'd like to see how we can. Uh, get this into French and uh, try to see how we can target those decision makers at the level of Minister of Health so that we can uh, sell our approach and make them buy it if they, they are aware, as, especially about the cost. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Amza, for the questions and for the presentation. So quickly, um, for French, we can definitely help with translating the uh, uh, the content I know for M Supply as well. Uh, uh, Richard is working on supporting the French countries, uh, so I think that would not be a problem. There's already of the the DHIS two LMIS approach that's already been translated uh, by your colleague actually Augustine. So thank you to Augustine for that. 
Um, when it comes to cost, I think that's a good question because really that's the first question we receive from countries when, uh, when we speak about these different solutions. Um, with the initial investment, uh, I think there's already good support to uh, improve and increase the LMIS competence within HISP groups. So we can look at existing funding both directly to HISP groups and to HISP's, HISP Center. Uh, again, Augustine is a good example of that, that we were able to recruit him and have him as a resource developing uh, these cases with the 10 supported countries, countries supported by his Rwanda. Uh, so I think that's a good example that there is good amount of backing and we can find that support um, to build even more competence. Uh, and then on the last point, it's something that we can first hear from the M supply team on different uh, uh, on their really business model and costing model. Uh, potential or or their ongoing move to uh, to open source, but it's a work area that then his center and M supply can work on to come up with some costing for implementations to see what does this mean if a country decides to implement it. And what is really interesting is to look at also the potential um, cost benefit of having this solution versus having, as I mentioned earlier, a very expensive ERP solution. What are you getting out of the investment uh, being made into this? So no clear final value. I think it really needs to be on a case-by-case -case basis, but something for us to explore together with the M supply team. Any other questions uh, from the group? Craig, do you want to go ahead? Thanks. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, just a quick uh comment on cost um when you're dealing with health supply chains um there's a much clearer link um uh, a cost benefit equation because uh i mean just to use a, a rough approximation most of the countries we're working in uh are spending at least 10 us dollars per head per year on medicines so um you can work that out for the countries you're interested in. And uh, usually the cost of an LMIS system will be way below 1% of their annual medicine budget. And um, if they can't save more than 1% by implementing it, then uh, they shouldn't go ahead. So often, uh, you know, wastage rates are running at uh, high single digits. So um, that doesn't mean that uh, implementing is a silver bullet. There's a whole lot of other things that you need to do to make this success, as I'm sure you know. But um, it, it is quite different from an HMIS where the, the link between the cost of the system and, and the benefits is harder to, to uh, draw a straight line between. It. So I think that's important. Just, just to give you an idea of um, uh, M-Supply has always charged ongoing support fees because we think it's valuable for countries to have um, uh, support available uh, on call. Uh, that ranges um, for just a few facilities. That might be like $25 to $30 a month per facility. If you scale up to thousands, then that price can come down closer to $3 a month. So once again, $3 a month, $36 a year. Um, we can make the cost cheap enough that everybody can afford it. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Craig, for that. And this is uh, great to hear your perspective because it's part of the um, thinking and uh, general considerations that we don't normally deal with within HMIS. So thank you for that. 1% of the value of medicines being the general cost for LMIS. That's a, that's a good reference point. All right, if no other questions, I'll hand over to uh, to Craig and, and Richard for the uh, the presentation from M Supply. And we still have an hour to go, so we have time to present and also take questions with them afterwards as well. So um, I'll hand over to you guys. Um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bruno. Uh, would you mind just enable the screen sharing? Oh, sure, one moment. All right, do you want to try now? Sure. Yes, it's working. Great, thank Good you. Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, 
I'll talk to the first few slides. So uh, we'll try we'll try and go quickly over the background because we know that you really want to get to the, the nitty gritty parts about how this would actually work for you. But uh, we hope that the background is is helpful for understanding where we're coming from. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Here we go. Okay, so um, we've uh, got four, four major points about our organization. So we have transitioned all our work uh, from being uh, a company to being a not-for-profit trust. So uh, uh, you will only be dealing with the not-for-profit trust and uh, we're registered in New Zealand and uh, it means we have to publicly publish um, our accounts every year and uh, we're subject to full audits, et cetera. And of course, we don't pay dividends or any surplus goes back into uh, providing more services. Uh, uh, secondly, we're transferring, transitioning all our software over to being open source. We've actually had open source solutions for uh, M-Supply Mobile for at the health facility level for almost 10 years now, but uh, we're moving our main desktop application over to an open source as well. Uh, that process is about halfway through. Uh, if you were to implement M Supply today uh, for a country, uh, there's still maybe around $10,000 of license fees as a one off, but that's very small in, in relation to the, the cost of a whole implementation. Uh, so Along with uh, uh, moving to open source, we've been able to make two other major changes. Firstly, um, uh, we've been able to maintain a single, write a new single code base for, that runs on, on Android and Windows and Mac desktops and also on the web. So uh, it means that uh, when you add a feature, uh, it goes to all platforms and uh, it reduces training costs because uh, the software user interface is the same on all platforms. And uh, lastly, we've been able to just take advantage of new technologies that have come along in the last 20 years. As you can imagine, there's been a lot. Thanks, Richard. So uh, I think uh, this slide will look quite different to DHIS too. Um, uh, although 20 years ago, we only had an office in Nepal. All our work at the start was in the Pacific. And uh, that was just a kind of a coincidence or good luck. And we're now at the point where every country in the Pacific use, uh, use M Supply as their national system, except for the two French territories. Uh, I, and I guess you could say Hawaii if you count that as a. Yeah. Um, Southeast Asia, uh, several countries. And uh, in Africa, uh, we've been uh, expanding fast. And when, when we say expanding fast, that's uh, just by trying to do a good job. We, we don't uh, do a whole lot in the way of uh, marketing. And recently in Colombia and Latin America as well. And you can see we've got, uh, we've got uh, our own staff in Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire. And we have development offices in, in Nepal and New Zealand and a couple of other staff in Papua New Guinea, Colombia, and Fiji. Thank you. OK, there's a lot going on in the slide, so uh, um, I hope you'll, we'll be sh uh, sharing these with you later. But uh, uh, Richardo, you wanted me to do this slide as well, or were you, you going to take over at this point? I'm, I'm sorry. I've... No, I'm... Yeah, I'm happy to do to do that part. So yes, like Craig said, I think there's a there's a lot on that slide. The idea is that we are trying to summarize uh, everything that M Supply can do and all the applications, uh, all the levels of the supply chain, and uh, maybe because I think it's going to be clear from the demonstration afterwards, uh, we we can maybe just uh, elaborate on the few things that we're not gonna we're not gonna um, showcase uh, for this webinar. But yeah, so on top of being an uh, ELMIS, we also have developed a solution to manage regulatory affairs called, it's a product called Conforma. So it's been used now in Fiji and in Angola. And basically uh, in Angola, it's being used to um, for the authorization to market for medicines. Um, there's, um, oh, maybe Craig, you, you have a better description of the project there. Um, And 
Uh, the other thing that we have been developing as well is also a new tool called the Health Supply Hub uh, to manage uh, to be able to manage tenders uh, in M Supply. So it's a separate tool uh, where uh, the countries can submit their tenders and receive offers um, from from external suppliers. And uh, eventually, so right now the link is not done between uh, Health Supply Hub and M Supply, but eventually we want to do that and be able to. Uh, be able to place purchase order, for instance, directly in M Supply using the the uh, awarded uh, contract in the Health Supply Hub. And maybe the other thing I wanted to say as well is that uh, we've been used in quite a few countries uh, as a, as a warehouse management system, so WMS, and actually even sometimes in some countries like Colombia or even IT at the moment, we are only uh, installed at the central warehouse level, and so. It's mostly currently our uh, proprietary system, so not the open source one that is used because that the, the solution that has the most features at the moment to manage large facilities like central warehouse. And then of course we have the LMS features. And I think uh, here uh, we really try to have the, the basic covered uh, with a system of report requisitions, uh, the ability to receive stock, distribute stock, adjust stock, by doing stock counts or stock take and having a suite of uh, built-in reports as well uh, to help with the operational side. And <clears throat> we have also this uh, last mile uh, solutions uh, for the health facility level, uh, including uh, per patient dispensing uh, vaccine administration. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of activities that are more suitable for uh, service delivery point, the lower, lower level facilities. And on the right here, you can see that we also have developed a call chain app. So that's an open source standalone app uh, that you can uh, that you can use on an Android tablet. And you can pair this tablet with uh, Bluetooth sensors that you can see here. And basically, it helps you to uh, monitor the temperature in your cold storage to up to between six and eight uh, sensors at the same time. So as you can see on the screen here, so you will see the real time uh, in real time, the temperature of your sensors, and of, you will receive alerts uh, when uh, something is happening, uh, temperature excursions. The next bit is also our online data visualization tool. So a highly customizable dashboard to display the KPI. So basically everything that is being captured in M-Supply can be uh, displayed in a, uh, in a web app that we call the M-Supply dashboard. And uh, that's most of the time, so, uh, yeah, service that we offer to most countries and that we adapt to their needs. And I can see at the on the lower part, you can see that we also uh, showcase the fact that we are uh, we have integrations with other softwares. And I think one of the most important software we've been integrating with is DHS2. I mean, in most countries we've been working with, there's always demand to make sure that our system can integrate with DHS2. But we also worked with other solutions uh, like OpenLMIS, which is another um, LMIS solution, and also uh, warehouse management systems such, such as uh, Sage, for instance. Uh, so the, the next part is really to go into the demo. So, so we start uh, showing you how M Supply looks like. Uh, but I just wanted to have this slide uh, as well to just basically um, yeah, give some background on uh, what kind of architecture we could offer uh, if we were to integrate, if we were to integrate with DHS2. So this 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 would be a typical setup where the central warehouse and its direct customers, so including the district stores, uh, would be using M, M supply uh, and receive the data, uh, especially for the orders. So on the monthly uh, on the monthly basis, for instance, they would receive orders from the service delivery point. Uh, pulling data from the DHS2 app. So yeah, so that's something I wanted to show you because it's it actually going to help understand what we have been working on in terms of integration. So now I'm just, I'm going to move actually not to M-Supply right away, but to uh, uh, a software that you are all familiar with. So that's the DHS2 uh, demo platform. And here, as you can see, I'm in the uh, data entry tool. Uh, I'm, I've selected one specific organizational unit. And I'm looking here at the real 
time stop monthly report and this period and just to show you that data have been captured here for this facility and basically now switching to M supply. So maybe just a very small introduction. So that's actually the interface of M supply desktop. So M supply desktop is our prop proprietary uh, non open source uh, software. Uh, so I I don't know if we're going to have the time to go into the details. I really I really would like to show you the open source solution instead because that's the one that we are now planning to implement in most of most of the countries we're working with. Uh, but for tonight's webinar, the little integration that we've done is now only working in this version of the software. So, but yeah, so basically this is the main M supply navigator. So you can manage everything about distributing stock to your customers in this section. The same here for your suppliers. You can see that we have the whole workflow from tenders to the actual um, receiving and including payments. Uh, here for items, that's everything links to inventory management, stock takes, locations, um, pick fix replenishments, inventory adjustments, et cetera. So that's really advanced feature that are most of the time used in large warehouse. And then we have also a whole suite of reports uh, that, uh, that is available within the tool. But here in our case, what I want to do now is that let's imagine that I am a district store and I'm, I want to receive the requisition from this organizational, organizational units. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, do, go, to go into that special menu on, at the top. And here there's a special uh, feature called get the AHS to data. So basically now what the system is doing is that it's fetching all the organizational units. Uh, so the, there's an actual link huh, between uh, the, the M supply software here and the DHS to server. And now in order to find the, uh, the, the monthly report for this facility, I will actually choose it in the dropdown list here. Here I have two options. I can either look up for all the monthly reports for the last 30 days, for instance, or if I know it, the period I'm looking for, I can already select it from the dropdown here. And then the only thing I need to do is to check the data. So it's looking into the THS2 server now. And hopefully we'll find something. And here you are in the list now, you have uh, one, one requisition, one monthly report for this period. And we can see that the complete date is actually the complete date where somebody clicked on that button here in DHS2. So we know that it, this one has been validated. So now I can just open it. And this is a, a requisition window or order window. And that's basically taking all the items that we can see here and taking all the data that we that has been entered, especially um, what has been distributed uh, and the stock on hand. And then based on this data, M Supply will be able to generate an order uh, and that will be hit. So customer requested quantity based basically on all the data that's been captured in DHS2. I think here we have chose the logic of saying that we would we would set the target for reordering to three months of stock. So three months worth of distribution. And so the logic is basically, so this target minus the stock on end would give you the customer requested quantity. And then because the system is all integrated, you can see that here at the district store, we can see our stock on hand, so all the stock available. So now the only thing I have to do is basically uh, choose what I want to supply to uh, the facilities. Oh, sorry, I actually realized I already worked on it, but yeah. So the idea is that here now I can uh, give the, the amount I want to supply to that facility. And when I'm done, uh, I can generate a customer invoice and allocate it. And then basically when I'm going to finalize it, it's going to push all that stuff towards the health facility. And it's finalized. And um, when we're talking about transactional system, what I'm, I'm just doing here is really, is as soon as I've, I have finalized that customer invoice, that outbound shipment, if you if you want, then our inventory our records are automatically being updated uh, on the once once it's finalized. Okay. The other bit I wanted to show you as well is that so that's one way we are pulling the data from DHS two. 
But what we can do as well is that we can also show to the facilities that a consignment has been made available. So again, I'm not sure, you must be familiar with the DHS2 capture tool. So here I'm going into the consignment receipt acknowledgement. And if I go into the, the same store, I should come in, then you can see that we do have the confirmation that consignment has been completed. So that's it for this uh, integration, but that's just really to show you that we are able to basically at the district store level using M-Supply to retrieve the data from the health facility using DHS2 to basically generate an order and to process them at the district store level. And now I want to switch to our open source solution. So I'll ask Greg uh, said it, uh, this solution is now our new open source uh, so software and it's available on different platforms. So here tonight I'm using the uh, web application uh, as you can see, but uh, once again, it's been, um, it's also available on Android tablets and uh, desktop app. So without further ado, let's connect into OpenM Supply. So as you can see, and that's, I think what we meant when we said that we are going to modernize our interface, it's a way more modern interface. So when the user logged in OpenM Supply, uh, the first thing he's gonna see is this uh, uh, dashboard where it's gonna be a, a lot of different metrics to basically have an idea of what's going on in his, uh, in his warehouse or in its store. Uh, so you can see, for instance, here, uh, in terms of inventory management, we have the expiring stock. So we know immediately that we have three expired stock, but most importantly, we would know if we have anything that is going to expire within a month. Uh, stock level, what is in stock out, um, the items who has not enough stock and the item who has too much stock, for instance. So here, 11 items with more than six months of stock. Then to navigate within the system, we open that menu here and we have all the different uh, activities that you need to perform in a, in a district store, for instance. So just to kind of show you how, for instance, we can do a shipment. So basically this is the main step. I'm going to create a new shipment. I'm going to select one of the customers within the list and basically just add items that are for which uh, that, that I want to send to that other facility. So I can either drop down here, but there's a possibility to search the code that you want to add. And here, and the system will basically tell you how many, uh, how many units are available. So you can basically just decide to say, okay, I want to give them 100 and the system will automatically allocate those, uh, those 100 units uh, through the multiple batch that may be available at your facility based on the first to expire, first out logic. But if you're not happy with the system suggestion, you can always modify it and decide which batch you can send. So, but we expect most of the users to just use this button and to uh, allocate this way. And then if I want to add another one, I just have to click to on OK next and I can immediately add another item to that list. So that's it. I got my, oh, got only one, must have not confirmed the, the other one. So once it's done, uh, I can actually go to hold the process. So confirm that it's been allocated, uh, confirm that it's been picked and then obviously shipped. And as you can see, there's also uh, two additional status at the end. And that's when the other facility is going to receive the shipment and when it's going to acknowledge the, the delivery, then actually me as a district stores, I would be able to see that yes, the shipment has been delivered and verified by the, by the customer. So let's do this. And once again, uh, because it's a transactional system, as soon as I'm finalizing this transaction, the stock is immediately being updated. And talking about stock, that's also one of the main, obviously the most important thing in an LMS is the ability to have a visibility on your available stock very quickly. So here is the list of all the stock available in this facility. And again, it's easy to just look up for one specific item and to look at all the batch that are available here with ability to export everything in an Excel as well for reporting purpose. Um, yep, yeah, so here, for instance, so as, as I said, here we are logged in as the Waikato district store. 
And uh, I may I want to move to another stall, like for instance, the health center. And because I wanted to show you as well, for instance, how it would look like to place an order. Oh, I'm gonna move to the other one, sorry. And oh, no, I wasn't the right one, it seems. Um, so yeah, basically this is, actually let's create a new one. I think it's going to be better. So let's place an order to the regional warehouse. Um, yeah, we have this very useful uh, tool that's, that's called a master list. So instead of adding all the items one by one, you can just use a master list to add uh, multiple add then, uh, item at once. So all the master lists are, uh, are customizable. So you can choose uh, the list that you want to create for whatever purpose you need them for. So just to show you, and as you can see, because I chose that list, then immediately all the items have been populated into my uh, into my order. And now what I wanted to show you as well is that the kind of thing that you can see when you are placing an order. So unfortunately here, I'm not choosing the right one. Sorry, it's a, it's a demo server. So sometimes it doesn't have very updated data. Just wanted to, but there's uh, like obviously some visual aids to help uh, the district store manager to know what kind of quantity he needs and what has been the consumption in the past and these kind of useful tricks that can really help when it comes to orderings. So yeah, that's one of the thing. Oh yeah, actually this one is also important. So you can place basically just uh, uh, internal orders uh, the way you want. But most of the countries we've been working with, uh, they are, um, they also want to have some kind of a periodic system. Uh, so they want an order to be placed every month or every three months for like the TB program, for instance. So in that case, it would be the API for the vaccines. And so we, you can actually set that up in M Supply to make sure that the, every facilities will be ordering on a, on a schedule, basically. So you can either place monthly or urgent and oh, there's no available period, sorry. But then you would choose the period you want to place the order for and and basically it would generate automatically an internal orders for that, for that program. So that's what we have been implementing in Djibouti, for instance. Um, maybe a little word as well about our dispensary menu. So here in OpenM Supply, you can manage your database of the patients of that health facility. Uh, obviously, you can create a new patient if you want to. Um, to uh, if you need to create a prescription for a new patient. So obviously, there's already a lot of Richard here because I've been using that demo quite a lot. So that's also the system telling you that there's been duplicates. And then when it's ready, you can go create a new prescription for Richard and add item as well, uh, very similar to the way we do outbound shipment. So Let's give amoxicillin. You can give direction here uh, if you want. And then select the quantity that you want to give to that customer. Oops, must be something wrong. This one is expired. OK. Oops. Here we go, and the same way we can confirm once it's been uh, given to the patient, we can confirm it as verified, and then that would also update uh, the consumption. So here we are talking about the per patient dispensing features, which are going to be really useful in facilities that have the capacity to basically handle these kind of uh, activities. And the last thing, uh, the last two thing I wanted to show is also something that we've been working on uh, recently is our cold chain um, module. So. There's actually two components here. So that's basically showing you, so you can actually use uh, the cold chain app that I was uh, I was talking about earlier, or you can also, uh, we also recently developed an integration with the Bellinger bridge tags. So you can upload the bridge tag data directly to your, into M supply and then have a, uh, basically monitor the temperature in open M supply. Here you're gonna have the bridge logs. So basically you're gonna be able to see all the, all the 
temperature breach that have been recorded in your facility for all the sensors and all your cold storage and basically all your temperature log for uh, all your sensors and storage location. And uh, at the moment, we are also working on the cold chain equipment uh, inventory module uh, that would be uh, used to basically uh, manage your uh, cold chain equipment in terms of uh, functional status and, uh, and uh, maintenance. And the last bit I wanted to show is also another tool that we have developed for PNG, where on top of being able to uh, dispense medicines to patients, we also have the ability to create what we call encounters for specific programs. So in this case, HEV. And basically on top of dispensing medicine to the patient, we will be able as well to capture clinical and epidemiological data, sorry. So like physical exam, for instance, the heights, you can add symptoms. Uh, yeah, so all these forms are uh, entirely customizable as well. Um, yeah, depending on the needs of the country. I think that's it. I don't know, Craig, if you want to add something about the live demo. Do you think that's something worth showing? Uh, thank you, Rishad. No, that's fantastic. Uh, I think um, uh, the main thing to say at this point is that um, uh, we've developed uh, OpenM Supply firstly to run at uh, sort of a district store level and uh, at a health facility level. So. Uh, uh, we'll be ex adding the warehousing functions and the procurement functions uh, and forecasting, et cetera, to open M supply over the next year. We uh, already have a grant to enable us to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. So please make sure to uh, to note all your questions. We will try to make the time at the end of this presentation to, to receive all your questions, if you have any. And uh, I'll keep the demo uh, active so it if we can always go back to it if needed. So yes, what's the M supply secrets? It's, uh, we think that one of the main, main factor of success of M supply is its offline first architecture. Uh, so basically uh, the ability to work in M supply uh, without internet. So basically here is this little diagram when internet is on, everything is working well. You can do your daily operational data. So like we said, you can, do your stock takes, you can dispense stock to your customers and patients, same at the other facility, and data can synchronize between the two facilities, thanks to the internet. However, when there's no longer internet, you can still use M Supply at both facilities for your daily operation of data. However, you would need a connection for the data to be shared across the facilities. So technically it's actually synchronized with the central server and that would be necessary, for instance, if you want to send an order to another facility. So you would need internet at least once to allow the system to synchronize the data, and then that would be good. You can cut the internet and continue, keep on working uh, on your PC or tablet. So now, so you've seen already the uh, integration that we've done. So this is actually another kind of integration we can do as well and that we have been working on in uh, in some countries. So it's actually what we call like the monthly push to DHS2. So in this case, instead of pulling data from DHS2 to generate orders and to uh, pull uh, replenishment data, here in that case, we are only taking like a few uh, metrics from M supply, like uh, stock on hand, uh, the um, uh, months of stock, the uh, expiring stock, this kind of thing. And we are pushing them into the DHS2 uh, server uh, to automatically update, for instance, on a monthly basis, the DHS2 dashboard that is being installed in, in many, many countries. So that's what we've done, for instance, in Timor. That's what we're working on in Djibouti as well. So basically for a list of uh, facilities and for a list of the selected products, we would share on a monthly basis these uh, metrics coming directly from M Supply. So yeah, like I said, so it's being used now in Laos, Timor. It's been almost finalized in uh, in Djibouti, South Sudan, and also in South Tome. Yeah, and we can we can say that the reliability is very good, and it's a very very easy setup, uh, just to match organizational units and data elements. 
This one, I think I'm not going to go into the details, but that's basically the side that presents the integration we've been uh, showing you tonight, uh, this, sorry, tonight for me, but uh, this morning for you, uh, to say that, uh, so it's a more advanced integration, uh, like we, like we, like the one we showed you. So where we are actually, uh, yeah, pulling data from DHS to, to generate orders at the M supply level. So most like most of the time that would be in a district warehouse uh, running M supply. So I I think there's a lot of potential for that kind of integration and. Uh, uh, hopefully soon it, this will be implemented. Uh, so as you can see, we already have a proof of concept working. So it's only now, I hope a matter of time uh, before we can actually implement it in uh, in the countries we are both working on. In health design options. So that's also something that we need to share. I think, uh, I think Breno uh, has been very clear when he said that uh, I, you know, the ideal setup, the um, DHS2 would be used at the uh, service delivery point level and M supply tools like M supply, like other, including other ELMS solution would be more suitable at the central level, regional and district level. And both system can work together as we just demonstrated uh, using an interface between the two. And yeah, we try to have a basically just to start the discussions to see uh, if we could make like a decision tree uh, to see which kind of facility should use M supply and which one should use DHS2. So I think here we said that the, the type of facility would probably be the first question. So, like we said, uh, warehouses. So, what you see on the right here would most likely use uh, a software like M supply to be able to manage uh, more advanced transactions. Uh, but then that's obviously uh, uh, a bit different for the other facilities. So if we take, for instance, if we start for service delivery points, uh, there's a real, um, it's important to really understand where the service delivery point is at in terms of uh, maturity for managing the supply chain. So most of the time in service delivery points, the staff is already uh, very busy, overwhelmed. And so it's not necessarily a good thing to install a software like M Supply. Uh, that requires to be used on a daily basis uh, to update the stock and to make sure everything is in order. So that's why we kind of say, for instance, if a uh, health facility is, is using the existing system in the health facility is the paper-based system, that potentially it's better to go with the DHS2 ELMS solution. And uh, whether it is the monthly, uh, monthly uh, real-time stock or it, whether it is the daily one. And then, like we said, it's always possible to uh, to push that data towards M supply at the district level if need to. Um, and then, for instance, maybe just the case of hospitals. So obviously, hospitals can have a large range of sizes, but uh, it happens sometimes, and we've seen it in the in countries that hospitals will have a dedicated pharmacy to uh, place orders and manage the logistics, basically, of the hospitals. And so this kind of uh, service where they have a dedicated staff that are yeah, dedicated to basically the, log the um, logistics operations, then in that case, it might be worth considering using M supply, but really depending on the, on the staff capacity and, uh, and, uh, and the kind of uh, needs they, they have. Um, one of the main thing would be, for instance, the batch level stock management. So if there's a real need to go at the batch level, so have the visibility on the different batch and expiry dates available, then in that case, maybe open M supply would be a better option. So yeah, that's also quite an important uh, topic as well. So we, are, we have taken the journey to uh, try and be uh, TSS compliance, uh, compliance sorry, uh, by the end of 2024. So I don't know if you're aware, but the, T, the TSS, they are the target uh, target software standards, I think, or I don't know if I'm saying this uh, the, the wrong way, uh, that have been published right. uh, by the, uh, you may know better, the International Supply Chain Group, I think, uh, without basically taking the feedback from uh, large organizations such as Gavi, the Global Fund, um, and yes, so our goal is to uh, make sure that OpenM Supply would be TSS compliant uh, by the end of 2024. 
And uh, so, yeah, that's an important uh, part for us. So we are really trying to 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 stick to that roadmap and to to try and achieve as many as as many TSS as possible. Do you want to add anything on this uh, topic, Frank? Uh, no, that's uh, pretty good. I I I guess our, uh, his friends won't won't have uh, been in been in this world with the <laughs> supply chain targets off West End. Uh, happy to talk more. Uh, contact us later if you want to know more about them. Thanks. Oh, do you want to yeah, carry sure. on with this one? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we uh, so uh, how how could uh, uh, HISP offices uh, work with us and uh, with your existing work with DHAs too? Uh, so, uh, firstly, uh, we are very open to uh, experimenting and uh, working with different countries to find what, uh, where your strengths are and uh, uh, how we can. Uh, uh, come work together in a way that's uh, good for the country. So uh, we're open to all sorts of models. Uh, obviously, you have a lot of uh, local knowledge, uh, cultural competency in your countries, and uh, uh, we would like to use that wherever possible. And then we bring specialist skills of uh, the tools that we work with. And uh, yeah, so, uh, and obviously, you have a lot of DHIS2 knowledge, which uh, is extremely valuable as well. So uh, if we uh, have long-term uh, support arrangements with a country, uh, we would be very happy for to upskill you to the point uh, uh, where you provide uh, first-line support, and then we would revenue share uh, regular support fees with you to ensure that uh, you were compensated for the time you spent in uh, maintaining that support service. Uh, obviously, uh, when there's new deployments, there's... Uh, there's work for business analysts kind of work, uh, trying to uh, design an implementation that will meet the country's needs. Uh, then there's a uh, uh, degree of uh, stakeholder engagement and uh, uh, training. And then of course, deployment work actually uh, working with facilities. We, we find that um, bringing people in for a central training and then just sending them back to their facility doesn't work well, uh, partly because there's quite a bit of work just to get a facility going. They need to do a stock take and they need to uh, get, uh, and obviously every facility, especially the larger ones, have very unique needs that they don't tell you about when they come to a training. They uh, specific, uh, you know, edge cases, and it's much better if, if you're on site for a week and can help them uh, work through those issues for the first time. So, has anybody got any questions about uh, this one? This might be where we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. So uh, how are we going for time? 20, 20 minutes for any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Breno and team, for organizing, and thank you all for listening. All right, great. Uh, big thank you to you, Craig and Richard, for presenting. That was a really great uh, overview and then also a, a detailed demo. So I think that was really great for us to see in action, also good to see the move from the um, um, existing system to the open source and how you're making that move. I'll open up immediately for questions. I see Dajo, do you want to go ahead with the first question? Yeah, hi, okay. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I just have two simple <laughs> questions. Uh, my first question is about the uh, uh, the way that you are going to make this system open source. I don't know if it's already done, or do you have a roadmap about it, a timeline? Uh, if it's already, we have already an available open source uh, sample, can, how can we get it? This is my first question. Uh, and my second question is about uh, dispensing product uh, for the, like, uh, HEV. Uh, we have this use case where some uh, we need uh, when we have our packer on the HS2 uh, to be able to pull dispensing uh, to the warehouse. And then from there, we could make, uh, we could order the enough drugs we need. So I want to know if with this M, 
uh, refugee system is it possible uh, from the tracker EHS2 uh, upload uh, like a patient list and they are dispensing products and uh, push it from the M supply and vice versa to the DHS2. Thank you. Hey, I'll, I'll try and ask. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, Rishad, are you okay uh, for the first question one? And I'll do the second one if you like. Yeah, for the first one, I think, yes. Yeah, so uh, I think I heard about the, yeah, so yes. So the the second part of the demonstration, so where I showed the uh, this uh, this software, it's indeed uh, an open source software. And yes, we can we can definitely make it available to you if you if you needed to yeah, test it and or even to show it to your partners, that's absolutely no problem. And in terms of roadmap, so like I said, we I think we are really trying to get uh, these uh, target software uh, standards, uh, and we are publishing our progress on our documentation uh, website. Uh, so that's also something that we can make available to you. And this documentation website also includes our current roadmap for developing new features. So we'll make sure to to send that to you as well. Thank you very much. And then for the second question, Craig, you wanted to say something, but I, yes. I think I can answer, right? I, I, I'm quite sure that as soon as we capture dispensing quantity in the trackers, and since DHS2 has an API, I'm, I'm very sure maybe actually Breno can say something about this, but uh, I'm very sure that there would, should be no problem to, to pull that data uh, to basically aggregate the consumption at the district or yeah, regional level. Okay, uh, thank you. Sorry, the, yeah. All right, thank you for the question. Uh, Dodjo, just to mention uh, uh, to the group that uh, you're working then with the HISP Western Central Africa team based in Togo, supporting very many uh, countries in Western Central Africa and, and many of the French speaking countries as well. Um, I think that's a very good question as well on dispensing. That can be a uh, another area that we can develop uh, uh, the use case on the integration. We've really focused on the supply chain management, distribution of stocks and demand network. That's been the focus so far. I think um, this question of dispensing is coming up uh, again and again. And I think you're referring to the, the patients registered in tracker and, and looking at quantities, but I know... Um, and if Mohammed uh, is still on the line, um, there's also a use case wanting to bring in uh, the 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 amounts that are paid by patients for for non-free items that uh, that needs to be first paid before it's being distributed by the pharmacist. So maybe a use case that we can explore in a bit more detail how to bring those together. Um, Mohammed, just feel free to to speak up if you want to to ask anything related to dispensing. Um, one question that I actually had related to the integration, and I don't know if Craig or Richard you want to comment or Jonah on the level of effort to build this demo integration, which uh, Richard presented, uh, because I think it's partly interesting from the purely technical aspect. This is a point-to-point -point integration and you're making use of the, um, the open API, but really M Supply is doing all of the heavy lifting, all of the, the work in pulling and pushing data. If you can maybe just comment on that, how much uh, effort and and how that's done. Um, and then secondly, I think it's to understand, um, yeah, the potential for working uh, and building additional workflows like the dispensing or others, if you have any comments or, or opinions on that. Uh, thanks, Bruno. On the amount of effort, um, we've, we've done... Uh, a moderate amount of the work already that's um, in our main code base and is reusable by other countries. And uh, there's always, um, because the two systems have their own uh, item lists, uh, we we record the the IDs from DHIS2 and M Supply, and there's a little bit of work to set that up. Uh, John has actually coded it very nicely where if it finds new items in DHIS2, it will add them to M Supply automatically. Uh, so You'd need to allow some budget for, um, uh, for a new country to get the integration working, but 
not huge amounts. You know, you're talking uh, five, five to ten days to uh, um, for configuration, and maybe the same for a little bit of custom development. And those are one-offs. Obviously, once it's all set up, if they don't change anything, then nothing will break. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you for that. Again, come with your questions uh, for those of you that are, are connected and interesting in learning more about M Supply. I actually have an additional question which has come up uh, other times and it was something I think Richard mentioned in the beginning. There's often the request to integrate D, uh, M Supply with DHS2. And I'm just curious, what is the use case? What is the need that you're presented with when it comes to integrating to DHS2? Is it from the LMIS and supply chain teams, or is it coming from the HMIS side for the point of analytics? What is the use case that you're presented with for integrating? Uh, thanks. To date, the integrations that we've done have been about a desire to get supply chain data uh, visible for um, stakeholders whose main main source of health information is DHIS2. So obviously, if, if you're um, working in supply chain, then you've got access to the customized M supply dashboards and you don't need to go somewhere else. But uh, people, for example, you know, higher level planners in the ministry, people, you know, making um, uh, human resource decisions across multiple departments, these kinds of things. And uh, people who are obviously uh, reporting on health data that they want to include things like medicine availability, then it's much easier if M Supply pushes that to DHIS too. So the new work we've been doing with Breno and his team, uh, we've uh, got some countries interested in that, and that that would be a new a new direction for our integration, and we're we're keen to explore that as well. Usually, a country would um, uh, maybe want a combination of both in the future. So, uh, be interesting to see how things go. Thank you. I should I should clarify that the two integrations are not mutually exclusive. It would be possible to have um, uh, obviously a FM supplies in the warehouses. Knowing your stock availability at your central warehouse is critical to your functioning of your health system. So we'd still be pushing that data to DHIS two, even if DHIS two was being used as a, a stock management tool at the lower level facilities. Thank you. All right, thank you for that, Craig. Um, and I think we have similar requirements and uh, I think it's interesting to understand. I'm going to put up a, a, a slide just to show the HIS landscape in just a second to show the complexity of the different uh, data and needs and also the, the requirements. So I think um, it's important to know yeah, that we can fill multiple roles and multiple use cases there. Um, I think we've been presenting uh, um, different aspects and touching on a few different potential challenges, but if I can be direct, Craig, we've discussed quite a bit um, around potential solutions, but I wonder what can you comment on the challenges? What for M Supply have been existing challenges in implementing your system so far? And you have, as I mentioned, very uh, extensive experience, uh, nearly 20 years of implementing. What are the main challenges uh, that you've faced and what do you see as challenges, but also opportunities going forward with this kind of, you know, collaboration, but also in a general sense, both, you know, organizational, structural, technical, uh, what can you comment on that? Perhaps you're muted, Craig, or, or maybe I scared you. Uh, sorry, that. sorry about that. My connection just uh, dropped out, and uh, I'm back. Uh, I did get the question about challenges. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, if you were to sum up uh, the main challenges, they're all all about people, not a, not about uh, technology. So um, once you have a system uh, that can work offline. Did we lose Craig again, or is it just me? Sorry about that. I don't know what's happening. It's uh, 
it's the second time it's dropped out. Uh, so we, um, uh, the people challenges um, are firstly about management buy-in. So um, if uh, it's very hard for uh, workers to be uh, enthusiastic if, if their management uh, aren't enthusiastic themselves. So, and uh, a good management team will result in a, in a motivated workforce. So uh, uh, you can teach people skills. It's very hard to teach them motivation. So uh, that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, you need a, a, a moderate level of of um, uh, of uh, HR functioning as well. For example, if you keep swapping out, swapping people out uh, to uh, different facilities, it's very hard to get uh, to train a, to train enough workers who uh, who can uh, do the job well. So just some basics around those sorts of things. And uh, then uh, I think the other thing is to implement uh, slow, go a bit slower than you'd expect, than you'd maybe want to go, but do a great job. It's much better to make incremental gains that you hang on to than to uh, go fast and then uh, have the system fail. And then nobody wants to go back and uh, 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 try to redo work in a, in a, failed, in a failed system. So... Uh, I think those are the main things, and uh, then the the last thing is to uh, listen well to the people in country and and hear their concerns and just work through them carefully and respectfully with them, so that they feel that they're being listened to and uh, that uh, often they have a lot of uh, uh, good ideas and local knowledge that uh, we often get great ideas from people in new countries. So uh, work work with them. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Um, I think first that speaks to the complexity of the context we're working in, both uh, in the specific countries and the challenges faced, but also the complexity of the requirements. And I'm just sharing here a um, uh, World Bank, uh, a snapshot from a World Bank report, uh, just showing the complexity of the HIS landscape and how these different pieces fit together. Of course, a lot of these are um, kind of... <laughs> um, not as neatly defined as you see it within the the image, but I think it adds to the complexity when you're going from HMIS to LMIS, pharmacy management, dispensing, accounting and finance, and other requirements. But um, I think we would definitely agree that a lot of the challenges also come from having the management and organizational buy-in and support, and not necessarily simply the technology. So thank you for that question. I think Abdurrahman had the question. Go ahead, please. Okay, perhaps not. I thought uh, there was a question earlier um, or a hand up earlier. Maybe one quick question again, uh, uh, Craig and team, if I missed it on the question of sustainability, what happens after the implementation period? Um, you mentioned having this uh, support uh, cost by facility, um, but is the uh, management of the system generally handed over to 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 ministry? And how is that how is that done? And how how has that been uh, the, uh, this model for sustainability after the implementation pre period? Thanks, Sabrina. Uh Firstly, support's entirely optional, so uh, no country is is obligated to take support. They can they can run the system on their own without recourse to to us. Um, usually, when you're getting into a national medical supply system, uh, uh, very high income Western countries would never dream of trying to do that without recourse to expert help. So, uh, we we think most countries. I would agree that uh, having some expertise available is, is really valuable. And uh, usually our ideal is to train super users in country and uh, the ministry develops their own first level support team. And we're in the background helping them with uh, issues that they can't address um, in country. Okay, great. We Thank you. We often say that we're uh, a little bit like uh, paying for a fire, a fire or an ambulance service that uh, uh, you, you have to pay a little bit even if you don't use them. But uh, when you do use them, you're very glad that you, you were paying regularly. Thanks.
Okay, that's great. I think that's a very similar approach also with the HS2, but having the HISP network being a president country, they provide uh, uh, definitely the, the first line before having to engage with HISP Center University of Oslo. But that's good to right. hear. I think it also provides some potential for developing a collaboration with them supply. Um, Amza, another question from you. Thanks, Bruno. Uh, I, I have a question about like uh, BACA. Is there a, a way of country having their own backup? Like country can set their own server where you can be sending sending a, a daily backup so they can keep kind of some records. That is one. Secondly, how do you manage the changes? So in case like they want to add a new product or they want to delete a product, how do you do you let that part being uh, done by the country themselves, or you do it on uh, their on their on their part? Thanks. Sure. The for for the backup options, uh, we we have multi level backup. Um, so that firstly uh, backs up to the machine uh, that they're using, and then we we offer countries an encrypted. Um, or, or cloud backup, but it's up to them if they don't want the data to leave their country, they can have to provide another you know, machine in country. Um, we have a fantastic record of not losing data for 20 years. So uh, uh, we, we've we even had um, whole whole facilities burned down and uh, they lost all their records except for their M supply data, which was backed up overnight for, for the facility burned down. So... Uh, yeah, we try very hard, and that those backups can be restored onto onto a local machine at a HISP if they give you permission, so that you can uh, help with troubleshooting and that kind of thing as well. And uh, then you asked about, um, for example, adding an item. Uh, so that kind of master data management um, is done on what we call our central server, and then it synchronizes out to every facility. So even though the facilities are offline, as soon as they synchronize, they get any changes. Almost always, that's done by the country. Uh, they don't need to. Um, they don't need to uh, come to us for doing some tasks like that. Um, and there's a very uh, detailed permission system allowing people to, you know, to decide exactly who who's able to do these tasks. Thank you. Great, thank you, Craig. And now we have a question from Roger. As we are just up on time, but go ahead, Roger. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have one question. In terms of deployment, do you allow country to, while setting up them, supply to install in their own data center, or it must be on the supply uh, uh, data center as well? Just um, the second question that I have, um, in the last, um, to demo that you presented to us for someone who interested in uh, like playing with the demo in how can someone get the credential for the two those two demo especially the web app so that you can get familiar with them supply thank you so um, yeah for the first question so um so basically, to I think the question was about hosting M supply, whether on a cloud server or maybe in a local in country data center, right? So yeah, the 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 answer is that it's basically up to the country. So some countries have chosen to to host it in the cloud because that makes it easier for our support team to access it, even though it's not impossible for our support team to access a, a local server. But then for some countries they have some regulations that actually. Uh, prevent them from storing this kind of data in the cloud. So we're happy to to use an existing data center. Uh, like for instance, I know for Djibouti, we've been using the cloud so far, but uh, soon we'll be uh, transferring the the the, the M supply central server to their uh, to their data center local. So that's really up to the to the countries. And then yes, obviously, like I said, it's it's totally okay to to have access to our uh, our demo. Uh, the only thing, maybe just uh, um, send an email to 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 our team, and uh, we'll we'll make sure to organize that. Maybe I I think we'd like maybe to give you a, a even more detailed uh, demonstration of the tool, um, uh, and then we can 
let you play with it uh, like you as you want. All right, thank you. All right, great. Thank you, everyone. We're just a few minutes over time, but I want to say a big thank you to the M Supply team for taking the time uh, both beforehand to prepare and, and work on and develop these discussions, and then for presenting today. Thank you to all the participants for taking the time for the good questions and engagement. Um, I guess we can share, I will share with all of the participants and all the, the invitees the contacts to the different teams so you can follow up if you can... Uh, uh, reach out to M Supply about accessing their demo instance. Uh, we're quite happy in developing this uh, relationship. We see that there's a lot of common uh, uh, principles that we're working on. I mean, we're looking to build sustainable systems that can support support health systems um, in the different countries we operate in. So I think that's a really great common objective that we have. Uh, and then also from the DHS to a uh, HISP center aspect, we're looking to work on existing gaps within implementations and listening to information coming in through the HISP teams from the, the ministries that we're supporting. So I think that's really key to have this understanding of where the gaps are, what solutions are you looking to to solve? And then um, in this way, in collaborating with M Supply uh, more closely, we can provide a holistic solution and not simply going from very limited specific feature from one to the next, and building uh, uh, over the organic system, but really looking what is the architecture that we're looking to uh, uh, to build towards and what is the holistic approach that we're looking to, uh, uh, to reach here. Uh, so again, thank you everybody, contributions, participation, and um, I'll share both the recording and contact information and some different resources uh, after the webinar. Uh, Craig and team, if you want to say any final words or share any information, please go ahead. Um, no, first of all, really thank you, uh, Bruno, for this opportunity to to engage with the HISP groups. Uh, I think we we really see this as a as a as a really good opportunity uh, to uh, to work together first. And uh, I, I'm sure there's a a lot of countries and and the donors would be very interested in having a combined solution between our two solutions. So yeah, the only thing I want to say is that please, if you want more information, if you are interested. If you want indeed to 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 use our, our demo, uh, please just reach out to us. We'll be very happy to answer all your questions and and requests. So, yeah. But again, thank you for listening, and uh, hope uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, everybody, and uh, thank you, Bruno and team. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. We look forward to hearing from you. All right. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, have a good rest of the day. We will all be in touch. Goodbye for now.